Let us go to line one and speak to uh, Lorraine Michael, the uh, NDP MHA for Signal Hill Kidivity. Good afternoon. How are you today? Very good. Good to have you back on the program. Um, Thank you very much for having me on. I wanted to come on to talk about the whole issue of the Harvard study that has indicated concerns about um, the levels of mercury that will down the road be attributed to Muskrat Falls. Okay. And uh, this is an issue that uh, I've been concerned about for a while, as was the Environmental Assessment Panel. Uh, They uh, recognized this as a potential issue when they put out their report, and uh, they had a couple of important recommendations. Uh, One was that a baseline study needed to be started immediately of the levels of mercury in Lake Melville, uh, because already there is levels of mercury uh, in Lake Melville because of um, the Upper Churchill. Mm-hmm. We still are having mercury attributed to the Upper Churchill. So they wanted a baseline study done. And then the other thing was a recommendation that in order to um, really minimize the potential of mercury uh, coming downstream, that there be a full clearing of the reservoir around um, Muskrat Falls in order to reduce the levels of mercury. And what I'm really, and I did uh, over three years ago raise this issue in the House of Assembly when actually Jerome Kennedy was Minister of Natural Resources and uh, got um, basically mocked by him. Uh, He did everything but uh, deal with the issue. And now we have NALCOR, and I would suggest the province again joining the ranks of what it seems uh, of uh, Harper's government, ignoring objective scientific evidence that this is a real concern. Okay, a couple of things before we continue. When you say clear the reservoir, what does that actually mean? What are you talking about there? Okay, what it means is that um, maybe people don't know because it's a scientific stuff. I mean, stuff I've learned over the years. But what creates the mercury is the vegetation around the dam, the vegetation becoming, um, um, you, you get the water that flows over the vegetation. It's that that creates the methyl mercury. So the recommendation of the environmental assessment panel was that all the vegetation that will be in the reservoir, that the vegetation be cleared because then you will have a real minimizing of production of mercury. Okay, and I might be completely out to lunch on this, but I'm thinking that the soil largely is made up from the organic matter from eons of vegetation. Does that not pose the same problem? Wouldn't you have to clear a lot of the soil that is uh, made up essentially? of former vegetative life? Well, I, I think it's the actual vegetation that, that okay. is the problem. So okay. I, that's what the clearing means, is the clearing of the vegetation. And where did and this Harvard study uh, initiate? Who, who's, uh, was that their own initiative? Uh, or, or Who's behind the study and how long have they been working on it? Uh, I think it's their own initiative. Okay. Uh, however, I know that uh, certainly the government of Nanazi Abbott would have known about it, mm-hmm. but it was their own initiative. And um, I think it's important to point out that this is a very serious study. It's a peer-reviewed study and um, in a very highly recognized um, uh, journal that uh, puts out these types of uh, studies. I think all of that needs to be recognized by people. This is not just Uh, a casual study but in doing this study they looked at one of the fjords in Labrador and what uh, indicated to them they did soil flooding experiments and what those soil flooding experiments indicated that you could see an increase of methylmercury inputs into the estuary that they uh, were doing the testing on by 25 to 200 percent overwhelming uh, the, um, the climate changes over the next decade. So you, it's, a, it's a very, very serious issue, and yet you have NALCOR uh, saying um, that, uh, you know, well, we're not sure we can do the full clearing. They're not saying why. If NALCOR is refusing to do what was recommended by the Environmental Assessment Panel, then I think they need to explain to us to the public and to Nazi Abbott why they are ignoring that recommendation. All they're saying is, well, it may not be possible. Well, why isn't it possible? Obviously, the Environmental Assessment Panel thought it was possible, and this was a panel of experts learning from other experts before they made the recommendations. Uh, can, 
tell me if, or if there were baseline studies done before the Upper Churchill? Do we have any indication or real solid uh, science on what uh, that impact has been in terms of the levels of uh, methylmercury today? My guess would be knowing what was not in place when the Upper Churchill uh, started. For example, you didn't have environmental assessments going on back then. Right. My guess would be that there were no baseline studies done. But there must be other uh, other places where such you know uh, work has been done where they would have some good scientific uh, comparative uh, data to uh, suggest exactly what we're likely to see here in this case with the Lower Churchill. Well, I think what we're getting from uh, from this research that uh, that has been done uh, is the kind of indicator that we're looking for. This this kind of study, for example, wasn't this particular study wasn't in place even when the environmental assessment panel did its work. This particular one, because this is particularly looking at uh, Arctic marine um, uh, veget uh, biota. Okay, so it, it's a very particular study looking at Arctic marine. Right. And, uh, but northern Quebec would be like similar it. in nature that they yes, could compare. But they, I doubt that there are baseline studies done there either based no. on the developments because most of the developments that have happened have happened before environmental assessments, most of them, right? right? Right, and and that's one of, that's one of the problems. But the indicator is that um, there was a significant enough um, data with regard to current methyl uh, mercury in Lake Melville that it was seen as attributable to Upper Churchill. So there was enough there for that decision to be made that it wasn't natural that it was because of the Upper Churchill. And this mercury eventually in, in, inevitably makes its way into pretty much every living thing and uh, eventually into all of us as well. Exactly. What, what's very disturbing is that um, NALCOR has said, you know, okay, well, there are two mitigative measures or two things that can be done to mitigate this. One is what was recommended by the panel, mm -hmm. which is the clearing, the complete clearing of the vegetation. And according to NALCOR, putting out advisories of mercury if the time comes that they need to do it. Well, that's not a mitigation. That's what you got to do when you find out there's mercury there, right? right? Mitigation means trying to mitigate as much as possible and not even happening. You know, right. uh, I can imagine it must be. I mean, there's, we're talking a massive area here. It would be, I would assume, a huge undertaking to clear that uh, that volume of vegetation, and and it must be not only a you know a, a resource uh, issue, but uh, just sheer cost in the end. It's just it, it must be massive. I know they might have suggested, but that doesn't mean they necessarily expect it. It, it can happen and still leave the project viable. Well, but I mean, this is part of the issue, isn't it, around development. We all want development, and, and I want to put that out front. We all want development. We need it for all kinds of reasons. We need it for employment. We need it for ongoing sources of income, et cetera. But we also have to make sure that if we're doing development, it is going to be good also for the lives of people and for the environment. And that's part of deciding whether or not um, a certain project should go ahead. So, uh, you know, I, I get upset when I hear the government and hear NALCOR poo-pooing the recommendations from a panel. I sat on a panel. I sat on the Voices Bay panel. And we took very seriously what we recommended. And we didn't recommend it thinking, well, they're probably not going to pay attention to this. You know, certainly there were some that you knew, uh, you know, we recommended that no, no more development should go on in Labrador until land claims were settled. And we really believed that. But we also knew we were dealing with governments that didn't believe it. Right. But you still don't make the recommendation saying, ah, oh, we'll just make this recommendation. You make it because you really believe in it. Right. So yeah. you think that they should be paying it a lot more heat, or at least uh, rather than dismissing it outright, saying, you know, something, there's something to these recommendations. We, we're going to do as much as possible, but uh, in the end... We can only do so much, and we're going to have to uh, hope for the best after that because we're too far into it. Even that, I guess, would be an admission and an acknowledgement of, of something that has validity. And sit down seriously with a government like the, the Nunatsi of a government 
and sit down with them and talk this one through and and really not not give a, a you know a, um, a dismissive kind of response which I really feel Gil uh, Bennett did uh, sit down with them and try to work it through uh, this is what should be happening all governments together should be sitting down and working this with the provincial government the Nunatsi Abbott government with NALCOR and maybe even the federal government has to be involved work uh, sit down and really look at it very seriously all right uh, Lorraine we do have to run I appreciate your time today no doubt this will be discussed uh, more at length um, lots of time to do that over the next uh, days and weeks great thank you so much Pete for the time take care bye bye okay bye bye